Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told, out of voice the radio, and today, I mean, look, over the past few days, there's been a lot of discussion about the fact that the Pokemon trading card game for Game Boy is coming to Nintendo Switch Online. And incidentally, this is absolutely wonderful. Now, as a bit of a side note, I have this game from many years ago. And then a few years back, I, as in like the physical Game Boy cartridge. And then a few years ago, I had lent it to a friend. But I really wanted to play it. So I bought another cartridge, picked it up on eBay nice and cheaply. And I've also bought it as a download on my 3DS. So yeah, th this is a game I'm very, 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 very familiar with and absolutely in love with. The idea of having it on my Switch to play through for the billionth time makes me exceedingly happy. I adore this game. But that got me thinking, because the story of this game has been told, and frankly, will continue to be told. People are going to keep talking about this game, and it's not on the Nintendo Switch Online yet, which is a little bit sad. But it's going to be on the Nintendo Switch. So, yeah. That's amazing. That makes me super duper 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 happy. But what about the others? Because there are others. In fact, there are two... That we never, ever, ever got. There are two games, two Pokemon TCG games, that were just never released outside of Japan. That makes me a little bit sad, but this is something we should have a little bit of a chat about. Now, the first one of these is actually the sequel. There was a Pokemon trading card game 2. How awesome is that? I mean, the answer is absolutely amazing, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely amazing. You see, the original Pokemon trading card game, that one, kind of featured not that many cards. I mean, essentially, what you got when you were playing it through was base jungle and fossil. That's largely what you got. There's some promo cards in there. But to keep it nice and simple for today, you've got base, jungle, and fossil. And that's kind of cool. Th those are good sets. I like this. And I've, oh, well, like I told you, I've, I've bought this game many times. I have played this game many times. I am just an absolutely gigantic fan of this game. But the fact of the matter is, I don't think it's unfair to say that the pool of cards was quite small. I don't think that's an unfair statement. Oh, as a side note, it came with a promo Meowth card outside of Japan and a promo Dragonite card inside of Japan. Shout out to the lovely folks at Bulbapedia for reminding me about some of this information. It's a good place to go and look this kind of stuff up. But there was a Japanese-only sequel here comes Team Rocket. I know. And basically, this was just a bigger, better game. There aren't that many changes. You can play as a female character this time. And, you know, bigger world and all of that. But what is important here is that it included Team Rocket. As in the set, Team Rocket. It included Team Rocket. Although it is worth bearing in mind that both of these games, both of the Game Boy games did have some cards missing. That's not the topic of today's video, but it is worth just pointing out. So essentially, what we got here was a very, very interesting sequel that basically just expanded a few things. And one of the coolest things, there were Japanese exclusive expansion sheets, uh, vending machine cards, they're often referred to. And they made it into the game. There are a bunch of cards, you know, Japanese exclusive promos that made it into the game. And I kind of adore this. Like, one of my very, very favorite ones here was the Gengar. It's generally referred to... As the Masaki promo, uh, it, it's a reference to Bill's name in Japan. Because the way you got these, and this was absolutely amazing, the way you actually got these, like the Gengar, there were some others as well, was you would mail away a Haunter and a copy of Bill's PC. You would mail these away, 
And they would mail you back the Gengar. It's a very, very expensive card nowadays. But I, I kind of adore this. Like, and it was literally, because obviously, you know, Gengar evolves when you trade it in the game. So the deal here basically was that you traded this card with an additional card. And then it would come back having evolved. Which is just weird and amazing. And I absolutely love it. And this is what was so cool about Here Comes Team Rocket. The fact that we had a whole bunch of these weird Japanese promos, as well as an extra set. And there's some other features we don't really need to get into today, but basically it was just an expanded version of the original with extra cards. Why did this never see a release in English? The answer is, I, I honestly don't know. Because at this point, the Pokemon TCG was huge. I mean, maybe the original game on Game Boy didn't sell well enough over here. So that's why we never saw a release. But at this stage, I don't think it's likely. There is actually a tiny bit of hope. And the tiny bit of hope is that Pokemon Go, or Nintendo really, go, well, okay, we've got this Nintendo Switch online. And we're adding Game Boy games to it now. Let's finally get an official translation of this and release it. If I had to guess, I'd say it was more likely that the Japanese version went on the Japanese version of the app. And they didn't do a translation. But I am desperately hoping there is an official translation that comes along. As it stands at the moment, it is just one that we never got, unfortunately. It never happened. Uh, it did come with promo cards as well, of course. It came with Great Rockets Mewtwo. And a Lugia promo. Shout out to Bulbapedia for the images. I will say, picking up a copy of this game in Japan is moderately expensive. It's not horrendous. like 40 quid or something. It, it, it's doable. Trying to pick up a copy with the promos, that is going to set you back. But there is another one that came out on the Nintendo DS. Now, if you can read a little bit of Japanese, the box is going to give this away, because forgive my pronunciation, but it basically says Asobi Kata, which is how to play. So it's actually called Pokemon Card Game How to Play DS. And yes, I'm delighted that my knowledge of Japanese means I can now read the cover of this. Point is, it's not actually a fully-fledged game in the same way that the Pokemon card game 2 on the Game Boy is. That is a proper game with a whole bunch of cards and it simulates full battles as you go through against a whole bunch of increasingly difficult trainers, etc. That is a proper... I would, simulate is probably the word. This is not. This is a basically promotional thing which was released to teach people how to play the game. Now, what's really cool, it actually came in a beginning set over in Japan. So, basically, what you had was a box that came with a bunch of cards. And you'll notice that you've got Superior, Ember, and Samurott there. I.e. the fully evolved first partner Pokemon from Black and White. And it was meant to be a way to begin to play the game. That was the whole point. Also, as you can see on the box there, it did include a, a DVD of how to play. Although, I believe not all the versions actually came with the DS game. I suppose that's pretty important. Yes, yeah, so here's a look at a box that does actually have the DS game in. So, my point is, this was kind of an awkward thing. The only way to get this software was to basically buy the right version of the beginner set. Not the one with the DVD. The one with the DS game. And this is really cool. Now, let's be perfectly clear, right? This is not a fully-fledged Pokemon TCG game. It is a learn-to-play thing, and that's about it. There are a bunch of tutorials. There are a couple of people to battle. And that is it. Simple as that. I think there's something like nine tutorials and then five computer characters to play against. And that's it. That's the game. And I use game kind of loosely here. Although, one very, very cool function of it is that it does have Nintendo DS download play, which basically means two players can play 
at the same time. It's one of those ones where one player boots it up and the other one can kind of download a version of the game. So you can actually play this two player against each other with only one copy of the cartridge, which is extremely cool. Now, for the billionth time on this channel, I do need to give a shout out to the lovely Antoine Boulet, who did hook me up with a copy of this a while ago now. And I'm actually just having a look as I record this video. I thought it might be worth having a bit of a look. Now, picking this up from Japan, as in buying it from Japan, having to use a proxy address, etc., is 3,300 yen, which means it's going to set you back like 25 bucks. This is not a terribly expensive thing. What's important is we aren't getting this. This is not getting an English language release. Like I say, we, we can cross our fingers and hold our breath and hope upon hope that maybe, some way, we actually end up getting the Game Boy, the, the sequel that was Japan only. There is a chance that that happens. I would say a fairly small chance, but there is a chance that that happens. This isn't coming out. There is basically no way that this is being released. I would be absolutely stunned if this got a release. Because it is a learn to play, it's a piece of learn to play software, which was Japan only, that came out for Gen 5. We're now heading into Gen 9, or in Gen 9, really. And yeah, it's just. It's not happening, ladies and gentlemen. I would love it if it did. I would be so happy. But the fact of the matter is, this was... It was learned to play software more than it was a fully-fledged game. But I like to see myself as a, as a kind of Pokemon TCG historian here. So I figured it would be, well, a little bit rude to let the Game Boy game head on over onto the eShop and not just share this with you. So I did. And I'm happy about that. But now, ladies and gentlemen, it's over to you guys. Have you played either of these exclusive versions? How excited are you for the version which is going to be on the Nintendo eShop? Not on the eShop, really, is it? It's on the online version. You know what I mean. Just tell me anything you want to tell me, honestly. Go nuts in the comment section, but be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk Pokemon and card games and Pokemon card games, all kinds of fun things. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, join a Discord and chat with us about Pokemon or anything else that takes your fancy, and get shoutouts on the channel like the lovely Edgar Menares, who's been a supporter of ours for a while now and seems to be a very lovely person. Goodbye. So thanks for the support, of course, and thanks for being a very lovely person. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.